Hello everyone, Farhan Further here and today a quick episode on the luggage, more specifically on the Moscomoto Rackless 80 and why am I actually ditching that in favor for the rack um, and some panniers. I don't really want to do a uh, review of the Rackless or other luggage which I have in here. What I would like to focus more on is why, what's the rationale behind actually ditching the rackless and going there. What I don't like about the rackless and why I think that the rack is not something from the past but is actually quite useful. Okay, so I traveled with the rack for most of my travels. On the Honda I have a um, rack which is a very slim one and I had the uh, Wolfman panniers on it and a duffel on top. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Very effective, very simple solution. With the Tenere, I started with the rack as well. I have the Outback Mototruck rack, which is symmetrical. And because the exhaust is far off to the side, the symmetrical design meant it was 61 centimeters wide. Plus, I bought secondhand backcountry 35 down in a pile. And that made the bike really, really wide. Uh, to the point when I was just like hitting stuff on the side of the road. So that was a little bit issue. Uh, but other than that, I actually really liked it. I, I don't really mind the weight, uh, more on that later. When I come back from the Morocco, because of the width of the rack, I ditched the rack and I got the Moscow motor, rackless. Now, that solves, obviously, the issue with the width. Because even now when it sits on the rack, you know, it would be kind of flopped like this and it is probably within the handlebar width, which is 90 centimeters. Now, the problem with the rack class in terms of the rack is that you obviously need to have something in the back on a tenor at least, because there's nothing to loop these two straps to hold it in place. So what I had was the Outback motor truck rack on the back like that. So I can actually attach the rack class. And on top of that, I had my rotor packs because I really, really like the rotor packs. And that was the configuration which I was trying for probably three months, four months now. And it kind of worked very well in terms of the width, but it didn't really work in other aspects. One very common reason to get rackless is to save the weight, as they say. Um, because you're obviously losing the rack and the, you're losing, in case of the Moscow, is quite heavy Moscow. Um, but I measured these things and uh, it's not as clear because I have the back countries with this extension, which is four liters, and on the other back country I have the Tracker 10. And um, if I put them on, I can also put the bottles in here. So that's a quite substantial amount of volume and I had to measure this twice because I couldn't believe it. It comes down to 7.8 kilos um, plus rack is 4.5 so you know 12.2 something like this uh, for this amount of volume which is like 85 liters plus these. Now the rack less as they said on the website, they, it measured the same 7.2 kilos, not much of a difference from this. And that is without these extensions, which if you look at the Moscow website, for the around the world configuration, they add the tracker, they add the pouches. So in terms of the luggage itself, it would be exactly the same way. Now where it starts to count is the rear rack. I had Outback motor tag, three kilos of weight. Um, you can obviously get something a little bit lighter, but you still have at least one kilo in here. So now we are on two kilos of a difference. And um, where it starts to count even more is that obviously with the panniers, you need to put something in here, which can be the, mo the heaviest uh, duffel ever, which is uh, Moscow Moto Backcountry 30, which comes to three kilos. So now we are on a four kilo difference 
on the setup or uh, one can go a little bit less technical and go with something uh, easy and this is the Wolfman 50 liter dry bag comes to 1.2 kilos and we are now having a 2.5 kilo difference between the Rackless around the world and the backcountry around the world. So in terms of the weight, I don't really think that there is a, a case for it because I wouldn't know the difference if I have two kilos on a bag if I'm traveling um, for a long distance or not. So yeah, also, if someone wants to really go light, don't buy Moscow Moto because this setup, which travels to India and back, is a Wolfman simple saddlebags plus this. I'm not kidding you, but this is 4.5 kilos, both bags, and this is 1.5, so 1.2. So we are on what, five, six kilos? 5.6, that's a half of anything. I mean like, well, okay, so rack, it's less than a rack less. So yeah, that's for the weight. The few issues which I have with the rack class are centered around the, the dry bags and the pockets um, of the rack class. And all that I'm gonna say now is really, really personal and it's really subjective and it's everyone's gonna have it different. Um, so. Let's delve into it. Um, so because the dry bags uh, in these pockets and in these pockets are basically a tubular shape and you have to slide them in, what happens is that if you stuff this quite uh, a lot with a lot of stuff, it gets quite chubby. And then when you're trying to slide it into these pockets, you have to wrestle it in a little bit. Moscow gave you these straps to help you just um, pull it in but still it is quite a um, wrestle. And uh, there is this compression strap which kind of holds the whole rackless in shape. Um, that needs to be loosened up and all that in order to just slide it in and out. Um, the same is valid for these aux pockets in here and they're really, really sturdy by the way. Um, so these pockets uh, or these dry bags, again, um, there is a little strap at the bottom to strap it in. A little bit of a fight. Um, another point on the pockets at the bottom is that um, they designed to hold these two uh, fuel bottles, one liter one. So if I, for example, want to put my thermos in this, it is really tight fit. Uh, it does hold two bottles of wine, which is brilliant. Uh, but if you, for example, want to put a, a fuel bottle and one and a half liter PET bottle in, no chance, no way, doesn't work. So that's uh, another point. Uh, then with these bags, so because you kind of have it like this, and now this is strapped down, um, when you ride in the muddy conditions and all that, the bottom of the bag is going to get covered in mud and the, the whole top is going to get covered in the top uh, in the mud. And the problem with that is that you're supposed to take this to your accommodation, whether it's a tent or hotel or whatever, and uh, you will be bringing a, a dirty stuff in, which, you know, it's not a big issue, but for example, with the panniers, uh, you just take the dry bag from inside, leave the, the dirty luggage out, and then you're done. That's another point is because it's tubular in shape, you have to be really organized what you're putting in and in which order, which means that if you want something at the bottom, you have to take the whole thing out. Uh, while with the panniers, you have a leeway for being disorganized, which is exactly what I am. Um, so uh, that will get worse if you have it dirty and you are in a tent, you have to literally take everything out. Um, while with the dry bags, clean ones, it's much easier to do. Um, another point on the dry bags is they are a little narrow, um, which means that, and they are tubular shape. So anything squarish is gonna waste volume in them. Uh, like my uh, boxes for food when I go to shopping or uh, shoes or 
uh, my stove or something like that, all that is going to kind of be really difficult to put in. Well, not really difficult, but it's going to waste space more than it does in the panniers. So that's um, about the dry bags. Okay, to finish this already long video, uh, I would like to say about the Rucklers that it is a really good piece of kit, don't take me wrong. If you want to ditch the rack, if you want to keep yourself within those 80 liters, which is provided by the standard, it's perfect because it, you can configure it in such a way, so many different ways that um, you can get really lightweight setups. So you can lose this, you can lose the beaver tail and you know, you, you will benefit from the lightness of the system, what it can provide. On the other hand, if uh, you need more volume, you will start putting stuff on it and it's going to mitigate completely the weight benefits, for example, because the back countries are exactly the same weight. Um, and you will need to add a little bit of a rack here and there and that starts to be a little bit dodgy. Um, so yeah, definitely think about that. Now I'm going to ditch the rack less because I have been able to slim the rack to the point where the panniers now start to make much more sense and I can keep the rack to use it to lift the bike and so on. So that's probably it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please um, don't be shy and uh, see you somewhere on the road.